Hello, I'm Larry Menti. Welcome to Jersey Matters. On this week's show, Governor Murphy announces an emergency plan to borrow a couple of billion dollars, but he needs approval from the legislative branch. We'll talk with John Bramnick, minority leader in the New Jersey Assembly, about that. Will the federal lawsuit brought by a Camden County gym end up in the U.S. Supreme Court? We'll talk with the owners about the possibility. According to a new poll, the pandemic has made Governor Murphy the most popular governor in New Jersey's history. We'll talk with Ashley Conan, director of the Eagleton Poll. And we'll have tips to make certain your kids are safe online during this pandemic. And now, my interview with Minority Leader in the New Jersey Assembly, Republican John Bramnick. Assemblyman, as always, thanks for joining us uh, in these difficult times. I hope you and your family are doing well. Thank you. Uh, it, difficult times for the state as well, in that they had economic problems before this. Now they are in a deep hole. The governor is talking about borrowing an exorbitant amount of money, and I guess he needs legislative approval for that. What do you say? Well, first, uh, I think constitutionally he can't borrow money and then spend it on operations. That's a case Lance versus, versus McGreevy. Second, I've watched this governor spend money in raising the uh, budget by 10 to 15 percent. Uh, I'm not in a position to let him borrow money and spend it. Uh, that's not going to happen on my watch. If he wants to have a meeting with me, and I had a meeting with him, and let the Republicans decide how to fix the budget, that's fine. But I'm surely not turning over uh, money to a governor who spends wildly, and he, that's what he's done since he's been in office. Billions of dollars, but what is the alternative? Well, the alternative is to sit down and first determine how you're going to cut, because we're in a position in this state with overwhelmingly high property taxes because we didn't do reforms. We didn't cut the budget. That's the first thing we do. Then we look at, at where we get additional funds during this pandemic. If you were brought into the discussion, if Republicans, not just you, were brought into the discussion, and maybe other Democrats that don't like this plan, and you were to, you were to have cuts first, then you would say it's okay to borrow money if you had cuts first. I would say a global discussion on reforms, cuts, the future of spending, and then we address the budget deficit. But we don't start by borrowing billions and then having discussions which are never gonna happen with respect to how this state spends money. Can you stop him? If he wants to do this, he runs the assembly in the Senate, right? The Democrats do. Well, I'm not sure he's got the votes in the Senate or the assembly. I know there's calls being made on the Democratic side. Uh, and I'd be less likely to see uh, President Sweeney grant him this authority. But also, I have heard of the, I think there's going to be two or three lawsuits to stop him because of, as I said, the case of Lance versus McGreevy. You need voter approval to borrow money for operational expenses. They're going to argue because it's an emergency, they don't need voter approval. I don't think that's what the court is going to say. He's hired um, some expensive and powerful attorneys to put together, I guess, the legislation on this. How do you feel about that? Well, expensive and powerful attorneys may have no influence on the Supreme Court's decision that says you need voter approval. I mean, you get the most expensive. I know some very expensive lawyers, but it's difficult for them to overrule the Supreme Court. Right, except that there is a provision, right, in the state constitution that allows spending over a certain amount if there is an emergency. And wouldn't a pandemic be an emergency? Well, spending on capital projects but the court case is pretty clear. You can never spend for operational day-to-day -day expenditures without voter approval. So I think they're interpreting one way. I think most uh, Republicans are interpreting the other way. And then we'll see what the courts do, because this is going to end up in the courts. If we vote next Thursday, it'll be in the courts by Friday. It's fascinating that this is happening kind of in an election year for New Jersey. I mean, there's already a declared candidate for the Republicans. There's a couple of other candidates, including yourself, that are thinking about it and possibly are going to get in. It, the governor's approval rating, according to the Eagleton poll, 
is the highest ever for a governor. And yet the, there seems to be some problems. What do you think is happening? What do you think the disconnect is? No, I think when a pandemic starts, we do support the leader, Republican or Democrat, and that's what's happened here. And I think that the governor has done some good things. I think he's now uh, going to become more unpopular for a couple of reasons. One, I think that he needs to open this economy faster than he's doing. Two, we've seen it uh, with prior governors, if you know what I mean. They could be at 70% and they can go down to 15%. So when all of a sudden there's no money, taxes have to be raised or he thinks taxes have to be raised, you start borrowing money, pandemic is over, well, then you watch those numbers, uh, they'll drop pretty precipitously. I, I was talking about attorneys a second ago. You're an attorney. Uh, are you following this case down in Camden County with the Atlas Gym? They're going in for an injunction today, a temporary injunction, so they could reopen. What are the ramifications of that if they get it? Well, I always like the fact that people can test the law through the courts. So I respect that as opposed to taking the law in your own hands. I think the issue is going to be not that the governor has the right. The question is, is he discriminating between different businesses? Can you allow two stores, one that's a big store, for example, a, uh, a one of the big box stores, selling the same thing that a small store can't sell? That's a due process argument. Much better argument than saying that the governor is simply outside of what we call ultra virus outside of the rights of an executive order. I don't think that's a winning theory, but the theory is I'm not sure you can discriminate between two businesses. It was interesting that you said you spoke to the governor uh, about his plans to borrow money. It was, it's interesting that that happened because I know one of the complaints of you and other Republicans is the, the governor hasn't been talking to Republicans. He didn't pull them in during this emergency. Is that just changing because of need, because he needs votes for this? Well, I think uh, he heard some complaints. Actually, former Governor Dick Cody and Senate President Steve Sweeney both publicly said, you should bring in the Republicans. Within a couple days, I was in the office with the governor, uh, socially distancing, and Senator Tom Kane, the leader in the Senate, and we began some discussions. So I think that was more about the uh, other members of his party saying, you know, John Bramnick and Tom Kane are not crazy. And I think you need to hear from, you know, all political uh, partisans. Do you feel like you were listened to? No. Uh, I, I, and the reason I said, I like Governor Murphy, okay, but I think he's become more and more isolated. Uh, I think it's, he is now getting so much pressure from so many different sources that he's getting more and more firm in his position. You said that the governor feels pressure. He's isolated and he feels some pressure from outside sources. Who? I think when he has these press conferences and he calls the health commissioner and the health commissioner says the same thing day in and day out, just gives statistics, that's not enough for the public. So what, it's, what you're seeing is business owners extremely upset. I know hospitals were deeply concerned that they couldn't do elective procedures. So he started, he's starting to get calls, I know this. He's starting to get pressure from all aspects of society that it's time to slowly open. And let me tell you why I think we should slowly open. In March, early March, people were not afraid of this virus. Now in June, or will be in early June, people are afraid. So I'm not hugging you, Larry. Okay, I'm going to your, I'm going to your cocktail right. party. I'm and I'm not I'm not shaking hands with you. I like you, okay? But nobody is getting close like they did in March. So we are in a different position now. Now we can slowly open and look, if people want to hug each other, that's their business. I'm not hugging a lot of people right now. That's not my thing. Um, but so my point is this, <clears throat> we, we are now serious about the virus and therefore we're gonna be more careful and I think we can open more businesses with that understanding. Wonderful, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. As always, I appreciate your time. You're more than gracious with it. Thank you. That was John Bramnick, minority leader in the New Jersey Assembly. Still to come, is Governor Phil Murphy the most popular governor in New Jersey history? A new poll says he is. We'll talk about it when Jersey Matters continues.